This video should make it easy for you to create a perfect notebook. And remember that the notebook is one half, that's 50% of your grade. So you want to really pay attention to this and do things exactly as you're shown here. So let's look first of all at the outside of the notebook. The front of the notebook identifies you and me and allows lost and found to return to either of us. And that sheet that you see in the front, I have a template for that in the notebook. And, uh, I'm sorry, in my website. And all you have to do is type in your name and period and you got it because everything else is there. It should look exactly like what you see here. And that's, that's how it's gonna be for you. Uh, stamp sheets, my friends, are like money. Money because they cannot be replaced. And because it's half your grade, uh, you, you can literally drop four grades by not having a notebook. So you, you really need that stamp sheet. Very, very important. And that's why the ID is so important. So here you see how it slips into a front pouch on the front of the notebook. So when you get your notebook, you want to be sure that it has a pouch up front to receive that little piece of paper, which is so important to identify you and me. So the next thing is, how big should it be? Two to three inches. And because the reason for that is, at the end of the semester, your notebook is going to be pretty doggone full. This particular notebook is relatively thin so far as paper is concerned. Most students find that they, uh, a notebook this size, which is I think a two and a half inch notebook, is none too much or none too large to be able to handle all the paper that you're going to be working with. So think two to three inches. You'll have a lot of papers. And D-ring, by the way, I think is the best. But you get what, what's going to fit with your budget. You're going to need 15 dividers, and here's what they look like when the notebook is totally completed. And those 15 dividers are uh, in two groups. The first group is standards. California State has 11 standards that we have to teach to as part of this course, uh, as the course, not, even, not just part of it, that is the course. And so um, the, the notebook filing system that I've created is very, very much um, geared to that. And the stamp sheets, whiteboard configuration, journals, and miscellaneous dividers come in the front part of the notebook. They have no numbers because they aren't standards. But all of the standards tabs will have numbers which refer to their specific standard number with the state of California. Here's how the thing looks and you can see this. Uh, this is just a picture of part of the course requirement sheet which you're going to be required to print the first day, or not the first day, but the first week of school. And keep in mind that these labels have to be followed exactly. If you don't follow them exactly, if you vary in any way, each one that is not done properly will cost you a point. Now, as we look at the first four, the, the, the first four have the stamp requirements, the stamps, I'm sorry, the stamp sheets, the course requirements, the stamp total sheet, and we're going to look at the other uh, printouts that you're going to have in there. So this way you keep your classroom currency, also known as the stamp sheet. And this is what it'll look like as we go along. Uh, some days there will be few if any stamps, so some days there will be holidays, and there's all kinds of things that happen. So uh, typically every week we get a different color and a different stamp. Your course requirement sheet is the next thing after the stamp sheet. These follow in this order. All right, And this guy is worth five points, not the, not the printout, but the tear-off form that's uh, attached to the last page. That needs to be cut off and returned to me. And if that's late, of course, it's only half credit. Now, uh, the student safety contract. Oh, let's go back here to this. The course requirements tells uh, what my grading system is. It tells about the cell phone policy. It tells about what happens with cheating. Uh, pretty much everything is covered in there. 
and what's not covered we cover on a point by point basis. So student safety contract is what you're going to need for uh, the laboratories when we do a lab uh, student safety rules the student safety contract rules must be followed and this also has a tear off and that's another five points. Acceptable use policy for computers. The very first day of school we use computers without this having been signed, but you are expect to get this signed ASAP because this tells what you can and cannot do with computers. So that's important for you to follow. And right after that you'll uh, have your whiteboard configuration. Now though all that stuff you just saw is in that first part here stamp requirements, stamp total sheet, and uh, the, the place that we have our uh, stamp total sheet I don't have in this right now but I will be getting it. Well no sooner said than done. Here's that, uh, here's that notebook grade sheet and uh, this guy is where we record everything that is going to affect your grade the notebook and you really don't want to have what you see right here that is bad news because that means that this student did not get the notebook graded for the second grading and uh, that puts a big hole in your grade so you want to be turning in your notebooks every time and on time and you also want to be sure that you are doing all your homework because the homework is like 80 percent of this notebook and so that's something that we'll discuss in detail at a later time. So let's move on. Once we're out of the stamp requirements uh, and, and uh, total sheet, that's uh, something we are now going to go into the whiteboard configuration. Whiteboards you copy every day. And these whiteboards go on a sheet of paper. You can uh, put as many on a sheet as you want, both front and back. Uh, so get all you can on each side. And you will also um, leave the room, I, I would leave room uh, for doing the do nows and the do nows can be done right like at the end of this guy right here you see where I'm doing the little air, wa circle that's coming in on itself okay that's where I would recommend you do the do nows and then your homework is going to be right below where you see this do now so you know, always want to leave room there but whiteboard configurations are very, very important. You need to copy down whatever's on the uh, smart board, actually, every day. We call that a whiteboard configuration. And next is your journal entry section. So we've looked at the stamp sheet section here. We've looked at the whiteboard configuration. And now we're into the journal entries. Journal entries are to be done every day. The journal entries are essentially a way for you to write a summary of what you learned on any given day. Now I've done a close-up of an entry and you can kind of see how this works. I had to do some corrections on this because the student had it wrong. But what I wanted to show you mainly is that you got a journal entry and this person has numbered them. I'm not real wild about that because all that really matters is the date. And I also prefer to have this whole section right here. And uh, let's get a pointer on this. So now you can see very clearly what I'm pointing to, that date. And I like to have the, the year as well. It's just a good idea. You don't have to write journal entry every time and you don't have to write the number one. But get all of this stuff out to the left of the a little uh, line here, the margin line, and what I've shown you in here is was actually a pretty good entry, and just that the student had the wrong concept, and that's okay. I, I'm not going to grade you down on that because you need to get this kind of stuff fixed for yourself. But t today, as I read this, today in class we learned about dipole moments. If that's all you have, if that's the kind of information you put in your journal, you're going to get graded down very severely in your notebook on that. So, you don't want to have uh, any sentences that would end that way. Okay? A 
the, the end should not be here. So this person went on and described what a dipole moment was, described it wrong, but was, uh, you know, a little confused and that's okay. So a dipole moment is a molecule that has a center of positive charge and a center of negative charge. There are two non-metals that form dipoles by having different electronegativities. These nonmetals are actually bonded to each other, and I should have put that in here too, but I, I just wanted to do a quick thing here and, and let you see how these should be done. But shifting electrons towards the more electronegative atom. The electron, more electronegative atom is the guy that's going to grab the electrons and be able to have them more of the time and so it makes one end negative and one end positive just like a magnet and we call that a dipole but at any rate the this this journal business is very very important to you and if you do a good journal at the end of every day you are going to really hang on to the information that you pick up in this class so you you want to do that um, now we're over in miscellaneous miscellaneous is where we file things that don't have a place all their own uh, or that they're going to be used more than once or sometimes perhaps for the whole year. I don't have a picture of it here but a periodic chart is the when you get a periodic chart from me that, that has a whole bunch of good information on it you'll want to put that in your miscellaneous section. Why? Just so it's easy to get to and because it's going to be used repeatedly. Now in this particular one this this little guy right here and let's get the pointer up on top the, this little guy right here is the release questions from the state of California for the chemistry CSTs. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that you would put in here. Uh, it's just CST release questions as I wrote in there. Um, another thing that you'll see in here, which is a good place to have it, my lecture notes on naming binary ionic compounds. That's something that you'll use forever, at least in, until this class is over. So naming compounds because it's used all year, I, I recommend students put it into the miscellaneous section. And the other thing that's a common thing to have in the miscellaneous section is your polyatomic ions. And polyatomic ions here are the things that you're going to memorize. Uh, you got to know the names of those guys or you'll be having lots of trouble later on in the course. So I have you memorize those and quiz you on them several times. Now, now come the standards. We've done the first four, okay? The first four which are covered by this blue line. And let's see if I can go back to it. Yeah, here's your first four. And we're going to now go to the last 11. And we're going to see how those are going to work for you. The, you'll only, I'll only show you a couple of standards tabs, but all of them will be used throughout this course and all of them require the same stuff that I'm showing you in this this uh, first example. All standards divider tabs have numbers referring to their standard. So that's that's the first thing that you gotta realize is very important. So now each standard divider will need a copy of the standard pasted to the front side of it. So what you're seeing here is the standard uh, tab is actually right here in the notebook for gases. Uh, the one that we're looking at right now is standard one. And you will see this is atomic and molecular structure. And these are all the standards that apply to that particular term. And we do a lot on this. This is one of the biggest ones that we have. So. I, I want you to scotch tape that thing, you know, tape it in at least one, two, three, four places so it stays in. If you glue them, it's not too good. Okay, the, the glued ones come out. Atomic molecular structure, um, you would have, for instance, all of your homework papers, any handouts that apply to this section that won't be going to uh, lots of different uh, chapters, uh, worksheets, notes, etc. that are part of that standard one 
go behind divider 1. And so uh, one of the things about having the standard numbers on here, like you see here and here and here, you see all those little numbers there that are the standard numbers, and then you have the description, uh, a brief summary description of what they are. You'll see here in the homework papers, I like you to have your page numbers as well as the problems that you are doing so they are clearly identified and I know what you've done and what you haven't done. And another typical homework paper here, uh, again you'll see the page number and that is right there at the, at the uh, very top. And I like to see these numbers off in the left hand column. So I just started doing that uh, about a year ago, and this is an older notebook, so it wasn't done that way. But homework on ionic solids, definitely standard one. And let's move on. And here's a quiz review that has to do with standard four, and that's the gases, gas laws. And um, this guy is one of the things that would go under gases for standard four. Now, all information that you need about to know about my notebook can also be found in my website. Now, what are we doing there? We are going to, first of all, this web address, and we're going to go to Standard Stuff, Class Forms and Charts, Section A, which is Notebooks and Grades. Now, I am going to take a link to my website which I put right here in my notebook file and we're going to go and look at exactly what I just said. So first of all we're, we're going to need to go to standard stuff and you see I hover over standard stuff and then I have to go below you see this line here. I'm going to go below that line and go and click on class forms and charts. Now here's all the stuff this is where everything is that you need. Okay? Your notebook cover template is here. Remember from the beginning of this? That's This is where you can pick up a copy of that. And what you do is you just want to open like I just did. And when you open, it's going to open up your, your um, Word folder or Word program. And this is the way it's going to look. And let's say that you're in period one. All you have to do is go in and back out the number one here for some reason it's not working for me uh, apparently it di oh it didn't open word uh, I, sh I should have done a say no I don't no this should work I don't know why it's not working but normally let's see let's put in no nope, it's not going to do anything for me but normally when you download this um, oh I've got to enable editing okay there now we should be able to do this. Here we are. Uh, Susan Smith. And let's say you're in my second period. So you put period two in there. Now all you have to do is print. Very, very simple. Very, very nice to be able to do that. So uh, when you finish, you don't need to save it. But that's how you can get your notebook template. It's quick and easy. Um, First day of class procedure forms, that's in here. Uh, you'll see lots of stuff about the notebook. And I've circled almost all of those now in this picture of that same screen we were just in. Uh, there's your cover template. There's the notebook organization and filing, the rubric, the notebook grading sheet, and the course requirements. And um, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So, I hope this helps you, and I, I hope you're going to have a perfect notebook and do well in the class. Bye-bye.